Good morning everybody and welcome to another edition of Courageous Christians. You're really welcome and thank you for uh, joining me. It's been lovely to hear some stories from some of you that have been uh, watching and listening and having a go at uh, some of the craft activities that we've been doing together. So we're ready for uh, another session today. I wonder if you've got some things ready uh, to help you to worship, to help you to focus on God just for the next 15 or 20 minutes or so. I've got my candle lit here and my stone and my cross um, and I've got some lovely purple cloth here and those of you that were watching Gail last week uh, might remember the significance of that lovely rich purple cloth and where we might find it. We'll talk some more about that in a little while and I've also got my globe helps me to remember that God holds the whole world in his hands because he created it and he made it. So I wonder what you've got there to help you to worship and to focus on God this morning. As we're getting those things ready, why don't we uh, pray together? That helps us just to focus and still our hearts and we hold our hands out to show the Lord that we're ready and willing for him to come and use us. So let's pray together. Father God, thank you that you are near, that through Jesus we can know you and that through your Holy Spirit we can live and join in with what you're doing today. Thank you, Father, that you hold the world and you hold us. Wherever we are, you are near. And we praise you, Father, for your goodness and your greatness. Come, Holy Spirit and be with us now, we pray. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. Now, I, I wonder what you are thinking about this uh, whole lockdown business, and I wonder what has been good for you, what you've enjoyed. I asked my son the other day uh, about what he'd enjoyed about lockdown, and he said one of the things he has genuinely enjoyed is being on his own and having some time and space by himself. I think he's a bit bored and fed up with that by now, um, but he has really enjoyed that. And I really admired the fact that he was able to think of something positive because all I'm doing is moaning about it. I'm fed up that I can't see my friends and I'm fed up that I can't go out and I'm fed up that I can't go where I want to go. And I was feeling really grumpy. And then I remembered the other day, do you remember when we looked at the Open Doors website and we learnt about Christians all over the world, families who uh, kind of live life in lockdown all the time because they're, um, if they uh, talk too loudly about being a Christian or they are caught meeting with their Christian friends or going to church, then you know they could be harmed or uh, in some danger. And so I thought, well, even though I feel a bit trapped, this is only temporary and actually uh, I'm being looked after by my government and there are children and families all over the world who are trapped but in a different way. So that made me think well I need to be more thankful, I need to choose to have an attitude of gratitude. Now on the website today hopefully you should be able to find uh, the, uh, the net of a cube, the net of a cube. And, uh, or you could make one for yourself. And what we're going to do is we're going to just practice together that attitude of gratitude. And what I've made is a dice. I've cut the net out on, on some card and I've coloured the different sides of the dice with different colours. So I've got together here some pens and some scissors and some glue. And this little dice is going to help me with that attitude of gratitude and what I've written different things on each side and then I've put the cube net together folded in the tabs really really carefully and glued in all the sections and I end up with something that looks a little bit like a dice and on each of the sides I've got things to help me to remember to be thankful gratitude is about showing thankfulness and so if I throw the dice and it lands face up with place, 
I'm going to think of a place I'm really thankful for. If it, I throw the dice and it lands face up with thing, I'm going to think of a thing, an object that I'm really thankful for. If it lands face up with a skill or an activity or a hobby, even if I can't do it at the moment, I'm going to choose to be thankful for that. So I've made my dice and perhaps you'd like to do that in your family and to just have practice together rolling and speaking out things that you are thankful for. So mine has landed with skill or activity or hobby face up and um, I'm really thankful I've got my sewing machine. I've really, really enjoyed a little bit of sewing over the last couple of weeks and we've been making some fabric face masks as well and we have some, we've had some fun. So perhaps you might like to use your cube net um, to make a thankful dice, an attitude of gratitude dice. We're going to read a story today about uh, Paul and Silas who, despite everything that was going wrong around them, were able to choose to be thankful and to praise God. So a little bit more about that in just a moment. Now, Gail set you a little challenge last week, didn't she? She was telling you the story of Lydia and we were learning about Lydia's faithfulness and ability to notice uh, what God was doing and to join in with that. And Lydia, that's where this purple cloth comes from, Lydia was a dealer in purple cloth. That was her job. And Gail set you a challenge and she said to you, where does that colour purple come from? Where does that purple dye come from? And I looked it up on the internet because we're allowed a Google challenge. We're allowed a Google search, aren't we, for this challenge? So I looked it up on the internet and I found out that Roman emperors and kings have been wearing purple for many, many years. And in fact, Roman emperors banned ordinary citizens from wearing purple so that they were the only ones that ever wore purple. And the purple dye first came from a country called Tyre. And Jesus called that country Tyre because that's what it was called in those days. And it's now a country called Lebanon, which is one of those countries that borders with Israel. You'll remember that was one of our challenges a couple of weeks ago. Um, so Lebanon is down there on the coast. And apparently the purple dye comes from a giant, a species of giant snail. I've got to read this. It's called Bolinus brandaris. You might like to have a look for that, but it's a, a species of giant snail. And these snails had to kind of be harvested. They had to be collected and the, they had to have their shells broken open. Uh, and then you had to kind of collect this kind of purple mucus, which is, I think it's probably a bit like snot. And they had to collect it and leave this kind of purple snotty mucusy stuff out in the sun till it went purple. And they had to collect hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of snails in order to make enough dye to dye a cloth. So to dye a cloth like this for an emperor's cloak, they would have had to have collected probably about 250,000 snails and collected all that mucus uh, and put it all together in order to make enough dye. Revolting. But hey, that's where it came from. And if you have a look at the Queen's coronation crown that she wears today, You'll notice that the fabric in the centre, around all the jewels, the fabric in the centre, is a really rich purpley colour. So kings and important people today, kings and queens today, still wear that rich purple fabric as a symbol of their royalty and a symbol of their authority. Very interesting stuff, so thank you Gail for that. Now you might like to uh, just press pause and find a song to sing together and I suggest together that we sing All Through History and All Through History is a great song that helps us to remember God's faithfulness and to help us to practice that attitude of gratitude where we can see God at work all through history. So do press pause, you'll find the link to the song on our website. Right, OK, so for today's story, then we'll need to download the story from the website or you might like to follow it in your Bibles. I'm reading the story of Paul and Silas, and this is taken from Acts chapter.
chapter 16. So Paul, we know, uh, has had that amazing interaction with Jesus and he's now going for it and taking the message, the good news of Jesus, all around. And he's got a young man with him, Silas, uh, and he is a, he's a kind of uh, being taught by Paul and being looked after by Paul. And Paul is being very fatherly with Silas, but Silas is a little bit younger than Paul. So this is their, this is one of their stories. Paul and Silas were in Philippi, a large bustling city. And one day, as they were going to meet others to pray, they were met by a young slave woman who had an evil spirit that enabled her to predict the future. She earned a lot of money for her owners by telling fortunes. She followed Paul and Silas, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God! She kept following them until Paul became so fed up that he turned around and said to the spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I order you to come out of her. The spirit went out of her that very moment. But when her owners realised that their chance of making money was gone, they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them to the crowded marketplace. These men are causing trouble in our city. They're teaching against our law. We don't have to listen to them, they said. And the crowd jeered and shouted and joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were beaten and whipped and thrown into jail. Oh, not again, groaned Silas. But Paul smiled through his bruises. Don't worry, Silas. God is with us, even in jail. He will never leave us alone. Be strong and courageous. The jailer was ordered to lock Paul and Silas up tight, so he threw them into the dark cell and fastened their feet between heavy blocks of wood. But this did not stop Paul and Silas praying and singing hymns of thankfulness to God. They sang and prayed so loudly that the other prisoners could listen to them and hear the good news of Jesus. Suddenly, at about midnight, while Paul and Silas were still singing and praying, there was a violent earthquake which shook the prison to its foundations. All at once the doors opened and the chains fell off all of the prisoners. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he thought all the prisoners had escaped. Oh no, my life is over if the prisoners have escaped, he cried. My life is finished. Just as he pulled out his sword, Paul shouted at the top of his voice, Don't harm yourself. We're all still here. The jailer called for a light and he rushed in and fell trembling at the feet of Paul and Silas. Then he led them outside and asked, why are you still here? You must have something very special. I want to live like you. What do I need to do to be courageous like you? Paul answered, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be rescued, you and all your family. Paul and Silas told him all about Jesus and the amazing stories about his life and his death. Then they went with the jailer to his house and told him and his whole family about the power of the Holy Spirit to help them change and live their lives for Jesus. The jailer washed their wounds and he and all his family were baptised by Paul. Stay with us, cried the jailer. Come, eat and rest. He and his family were filled with joy because they now had faith in Jesus. The next morning, the jailer told Paul, the officials have sent an order for you and Silas to be released. You may leave then and go in peace. OK, so let's have a think. First of all, what do we learn about God from this story? Well, it seems an impossible situation, doesn't it? Paul and Silas are in prison. They really, really are in lockdown. They are trapped, they are chained, they were bruised, they've been pretty roughly treated, and they may well have been sore, uh, and perhaps even have been really, had something about their body that really, really hurt. So it seems an impossible situation. But God 
is able to turn that impossible situation into something amazing. Paul and Silas were pretty weak at that point, weren't they? They couldn't go anywhere, uh, their bodies were hurting, um, they couldn't really see anyone, it was dark, and yet God gave them an amazing opportunity. So what we learn about God in this story is that what we think perhaps looks like a really difficult situation, God is still able to turn it on its head and do something amazing. Where we feel really weak, uh, when we don't feel very strong or very brave, God is able to still use that and use us to bring about his purposes so that people can see him clearly. How amazing is that? What do we learn about ourselves in this story? What do we learn about the way people work? Well, let's have a look at Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas must have been feeling pretty fed up. This wasn't the first time they'd ended up in, in prison. It wasn't the first time they'd been accused of doing something wrong when they hadn't done anything wrong. They must have been feeling pretty fed up. But they still chose to praise God. Do you remember in the story? They're in prison and locked up and in the dark. They may have been sitting on a, a wet floor and it may have been dirty. There may have been bugs crawling around. They may have had um, bleeding and sores, but they still chose to pray out loud, to sing songs out loud, to be thankful to God out loud. I wonder, like I was saying earlier, I'm not always in that place where I'm prepared to praise and give thanks to God. But Paul and Silas did. And God honoured those praises, didn't he? God heard those praises and he honoured them. And then they had the opportunity to escape because this earthquake came and uh, something happened that kind of juggled the walls and, and, and maybe where the chains were fixed into the walls, they fell out. Uh, something amazing happened. And Paul and Silas and the other prisoners could have run away, but they didn't. And because of that, the jailer asked them questions. Because they didn't do what was expected, there was an opportunity to then talk about Jesus. And maybe sometimes we need to notice those opportunities. We need to not behave in the way we're expected to so that people ask us questions. And we've got an opportunity then to talk about Jesus. They weren't frightened. They really knew that God was with them. And they were able to be courageous in that moment. So it made me think about what situations need God's breakthrough today. Where do we need God to really break in like he did in that prison where things seem useless, uh, where we feel weak, where the situation seems impossible. So I'm going to make another dice. So I'm going to print off another uh, net for a cube. And I'm going to make another dice. I haven't had time um, to decorate mine. Mine's still white, but you might like to decorate yours. And I've written on the different sides of the dice this time, I've written some people and some situations where I really need God to break through. We as a community need God to break through. I'd love to see uh, God uh, break through in an impossible or difficult situation. So I've written on here, of course, um, the virus and the vaccine. We need God to heal our land, don't we? We need God to be working supernaturally with our doctors and our people who understand about medicine and disease and virus to help them to find a solution. Um, where it's there, There's countries all over the world where things are still really bad and we need God to break through. So I've written that on there. Um, uh, my dad, I've written that on there because he fell over this week and he's, he's not very well. So I'd, I'd really like, like God to break through. Uh, for him. I've decided to, to, to pray. I'd like to be able to pray for our Prime Minister, for Mr Johnson, uh, because the Bible tells us we should pray for our leaders uh, because they're the ones in charge and we need uh, the Prime Minister to know that God is with him. So there's all sorts of people and situations that you could write, maybe you'd like to decide as a family before you stick your dice together, it's a little bit easier, to write You've got six people or six situations where you would like to see God break through. I've got my friend Sarah on uh, one of those. Uh, I've got all my friends. I've got lots of friends who are teachers or who work in schools. 
uh, want to be able to pray for them uh, and uh, and we've got a friend called Alan over the road and uh, he's not very well at the moment either and he's frightened about getting the virus so I've written him on there as well and then I can use my my glue or some tape to stick the last few bits together so as well as my uh, my attitude of gratitude dice uh, the dice uh, that helps me to be thankful to God and name those things to be thankful for just like Paul and Silas did in the prison I also got situations which I can name out loud in front of God and ask him to break through because we've read a story uh, and seen God's power break through so I can roll the dice and pray they just name those things out loud you might like to take it in turns to roll the dice and name those things out loud in front of God in your family. Now we also have, of course, our Courageous Christians Prayer that we always say together uh, each week. And hopefully you've got that printed out. You might like to read it out loud with me. And you might like to join in with a little chorus. Or you might like to uh, just listen to me praying it with us. So the little chorus, remember, is thank you, Holy Spirit, that we all say out loud together. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for the power to praise you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for power to serve you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for peace and patience. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your dear presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for acts of healing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for true believing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for faith to trust you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for power to love you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for courage and boldness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for all your greatness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to set you a little challenge. Uh, and uh, we are coming towards the end of our, our journey through Acts at the moment. Uh, we've got one more session uh, next week. But before we end this little section... Um, in the book of Acts. I want to challenge you to go away and find out about our Bible. Do you know how many books there are in the Bible? Uh, do you know what the word Bible means? Do you know who wrote it or when it was written? See if you can go away and find five facts about our Bible. What do you know already and what else can you find out? Remember you're allowed a Google search for this challenge and we'll talk some more about that next week. Thank you very much for joining me and I uh, pray your blessing on you all in your homes and your families as you go out into the week and I will see you soon. Goodbye.